Hi, I'm Amy Dykeman. And I'm Zach O'Hara. And you're watching Kidlit, Kidlit TV. TV. You're watching the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on Kidlit TV. And now here are your hosts, Rocco Steno and Ellen Myrick. Hi, I'm Rocco Stano, and welcome to KidLit TV. Today, we're here with Publisher Spotlight and Ellen Myrick. And what are we going to be doing, Ellen? Well, we're going to hear about 18 different publishers and 34 different books over the course of the next two hours, maybe a little bit less. But we can do it, right? Yeah, right. And before we start, there actually is a link on the bottom of your mm -hmm. screen that you can actually print out a uh, list of all the books we'll be uh, speaking about today so you can follow along. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna start off today with Peachtree Publishers who is celebrating their 40th anniversary and in publishing these days, that is quite a, an accomplishment. Yes. For sure. So the one we're gonna start off with is Rapunzel. Now, a lot of you may remember Little Red, which was a New York Times 10 best illustrated book last year. And it was the book that everyone wanted to do Bookface with. Do you remember Bookface? Bookface is when you do this. Mm-hmm. So that is Bookface. <laughs> so Rapunzel is also equally good at Bookface as Little Red. And it is the story for Rapunzel, but it has the own Beth Ann Woolworth Wolven's own take on it. So here we have the beautiful bright yellow colors. And we can see, ah, we can see Rapunzel. There we go. Let me go over here. And she has the ingenuity, and I think this is actually STEM. She has the technology and engineering capability to build a rope ladder of her hair. I have never <laughs> done that. I, I think it would be an amazing thing to try to do, but she manages to do that. And she escapes from the tower, and the witch, of course, is left below, and she just wants to really defeat that witch. Because what girl who's been imprisoned by a tower all of her life doesn't want to defeat the witch and put her there? So she decides she's going to become a master marauder, defeating witches all over the place. And then the last spread you see is all of the witches hiding out in the woods because they do not want Rapunzel to find them. So this is Rapunzel by Beth Ann Wolven by Petrie Publishers. And if you don't have Little Red, you should get that one too. Mm -hmm. All right. And I have a beautiful book called Miguel Brave Night. And you know, today is Poem in Your Pocket Day. And oh. this is a great book for Poem in Your Pocket Day because this book is in verse. So it's Miguel Brave Night, Young Safantes, and his dream of Don Quixote. And what a team, a Margarita Engel and Raul Colon. And it's all about the young Cervantes. And I learned so much about uh, Cervantes. You know, I love uh, picture books, and picture books are not only for kids. And this is a book mm -hmm. that you could use with young kids, but also with older kids. You know, if you are a teacher in Spanish or language arts, you can learn so much about Cervantes. One of the thing, examples I learned is that his father had uh, some problems, and occasionally he would be hauled off to jail, and oh, here, no. and this is a, uh, a spread where his father's being hauled off in a, a very um, um, medieval uh, uh, yeah. police van. You know, as you can see. I guess it's a cart. A yes. cart. The yes. police cart. The yeah. police cart. Yeah. And and I did not know that uh, Cervantes was actually um, was actually. Uh, published when he was uh, very young. One of yeah. his teachers uh, took his uh, poems and had them uh, published. And when uh, getting published at, in, at such a young age at That's that amazing. time was amazing. Yes, and here's another one of Raul Colon's um, great illustrations. And then, you know, um, the, the, the poems, like learning to write, each, each uh, poem just moves the story on a disaster. Wow, it's so beautiful. It is a beautiful book. And again... And Margarita uh, Engel is the... You know, yes, that's, terrific. She's amazing. Yes, yes. So, so that's so interesting. Miguel's Brave Knight. So yes. I hope I, we should all check out that. And he did so many firsts. He wrote the, he's published a poem when he was 12, but he also wrote the very the first, first novel. novel. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think... We should say that. Yes. yes. Thank you. So, yes. Uh, Don so, Quixote. So, yes. it has been said. It has been mm -hmm. said. Yes. Don Quixote. Or if, if you're British, I guess it's Don Quixote, right? I yeah. don't know. <laughs> oh, no. No. I'm sorry. That was bad news. Well, let's move on to somebody else who's very brave. We're going to talk now about Pajama Press. 
And Pajama Press has a beautiful, beautiful new novel that is coming out. Now, I'm sure you remember Nim's Island. It was a very popular movie. It came out a little while ago. And Nim's Island was written by Wendy Orr, who is a Canadian living in Australia. So evidently, she likes to be part of the Commonwealth. And she's written this new novel, which takes place in, in Crete, which is very steeped in Greek mythology, and more specifically, in Crete mythology. Crete mythology. Now, you've heard of the Minotaur. So the Minotaur is part of Minoan legends. And what happened in this story is Aisa is, her village is attacked when she's a small child, and her mother says, don't say a word till I come back. Well, she never comes back. So she is mute, and that makes her an other in the, in the society that she grows up in. Well, later, when the Minoan king tries to take her over, take over the, uh, the town, and he demands a tribute, he demands that young people come and dance with the bulls. Well, guess who they decide to send? Aisa. Little do they know that she has a mysterious ability to talk with animals. So that is what Dragonfly Song is all about, and I'm sure you'll want to check it out. Wonderful historical fiction based in, um, in Crete, and something that has some fantastical elements with it as well. So more from Pajama Press. Yes, and I have, uh, well, I don't have it, but it's up on my screen, uh, Prince Princess Pistachio and Maurice the Magnificent. Mm -hmm. Well, Maurice the Magnificent uh, starts out as a, a dog without a name and actually reminded me of my own dog because all this creature wants to do is sleep. It's very good at sleeping. And when uh, Pistachio's friends make fun of the dog, she decides that this dog is going to become a star. And so he does. He, and he's re renamed Maurice the Magnificent, gets a role as Sleeping Beauty because he does it so well. But like many stars, he finds that show business is not for him but, uh, and decides that he retires very quickly. But it was a, it's a great book, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Princess Pistachio and her friends. And it's the third one in the series, yeah. and it's an easy reader chapter book, which ah. is always hard to find. Yes. Really good, by Marie-Louise Gay. Yeah. So she's a wonderful author. And Pajama Press. Pajama Press. And now, let's talk about names, shall we? Maurice the Magnificent is part of a name. Well, this is a book from Inhabit Media, which is another Canadian publisher. This one is actually located in Igalowit way up in Nunavut, which is in northern Canada. They also have a publishing office in Toronto as well. But they do a wonderful job of celebrating and encouraging Inuit culture. And in how Nivy gets her names, I kind of think it was Thunder Boy for Inuit populations. But this talks about an Inuit tradition of when a child is named, that child is named for all the ancestors that they want that child to have the characteristics of. So you can imagine this, lends, this leads to some very, very long names. And this is Nivy, and she has her name, which is, my name is Niviak, she said, pronouncing the Q just as she had been taught to do. But that's not my only name. My toys only have one name, but I have lots. I am Niviak, Kauki, Bobby, Umela, Jamesy. Those are my names. She stood up straight, proud to have recited all of her names perfectly, and I apologize to anybody who speaks Inuit or Inuktitut <laughs> uh, on my pronunciation of that, but I'm sure you can get the real, the real deal and, and ask them to pronounce it for you. And she asks, why does she have so many names? And then her mother explains to her the tradition of the Inuit families and how they try to impart all those wonderful characteristics of her grandmother and maybe a great aunt and maybe a great great grandmother or maybe even a great 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 grandfather into the names of that one child. So this is just one of the many wonderful books from Inhabit Media that are relatable for anybody. Well, I have a book about people, most people, and it's a very uh, great book to uh, use with uh, children because it's a very uh, shows the diverse population yeah. and people that are good to each other, like on this spread here, we have this fellow uh, with tats and a little uh, beard, facial hair saying, uh, after you, uh, madam. And he goes, most people want to make other people, even strangers, feel good. Most people are very good people. But there are occasions when people are not good. Some people do, so. some people do bad things, they yell bad words, they lie and steal, they bully and they hurt and they destroy, but most people don't do these things. And people can change, and this is a great book mm -hmm. for teaching empathy. 
Right, and it's from Tilbury House, who's a House. wonderful publisher based in Maine. And Jennifer Morris did the illustrations for this, also did the illustrations for Lemonade Hurricane, mm -hmm. which is a great book on mindfulness, which we'll be talking more about later. So next up, we're going to be talking about a brand new publisher who's coming here to the United States for the very first time this fall, Lantana Publishing. Now, they've only been in existence for two and a half years, but they've already been nominated for Publisher of the Year from Bologna, which I think may be a record. Mm -hmm. And they also won the Africana Award with the book that Rocco's going to tell you about in a minute. But I want to tell you about the Tigan and the Liger. Now, Rocco, did you know that ligers are a thing? A liger? A liger is no. a real thing, yes. I'm going to have to go up to the Bronx Zoo and see if they have it. Uh, well, I, I think it takes very special situations for uh, that to happen, oh, but we won't go into those kinds of details We won't go into that, right okay. No, we're just going to talk. In biology class, that's, I think. Yes, that's yes. a whole different thing. Oh, I got so, it. So <laughs> Tyler the Tigan was terribly rare. A big cat like him wasn't found everywhere. Unique from his ears to his tail to his tongue. His dad was a tiger, a lion his mom. So that is what he is, and then... I think this is just gorgeous, but you can see how poor, the poor Tigan is excluded from everybody. Everybody else has their own people like them, but he is left out on his own. So he tries to find people who will play with him, and he decides that he's, he's just never going to. He's so lonely until the day he finds the liger. And when that happens, everything changes. So there is the absolutely beautiful, I, ha I think you have to agree, liger. And then the two of them decide to play their own game. And their game looks like so much fun that you know what? All the other cats want to join in. So here we have everybody else joining in at the end, and everybody is happy. So you can be yourself, but you can also have fun with everybody else. And that's not a bad message in today's world. Yes. So, so you said the uh, Africana Award. Yes. And, uh, and that went to Chicken in the Kitchen, which is a very uh, diverse creative team mm -hmm. because uh, the... Uh, is it the illustrator who's our author? Is from Nigeria. Uh, from Nigeria, yeah. and the illustrator is from um, Iran. Iran, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, based on a Nigerian folktale, and I found out there's such a thing as the Yam Festival, and, um, and I wish I had a yam here to hold up, but <laughs> but instead uh, they're the great illustrations of the very large chicken who invades uh, the uh, kitchen and starts eating the yams r that were uh, going to be used for the yam festival. So the, uh, the, the girl calls upon the wood wit, which is a, a spirit, yeah. to come and help her. And he goes, hey, all you have to do is speak chickenese to the chicken. And so obvious. So obvious. Yes. Yes. And so... She uh, begins uh, to speak, not knowing how to speak Chickenese. She speaks, uh, but she learns to speak Chickenese. And you, when you read this or share this with kids, you can have a lot of fun speaking Chickenese. Well, I want to speak Chickenese. I'm going to have to definitely check that out yes, and, try yeah. and practice well, my Chickenese. Buck, buck is the beginning, but then there's a few others here. So uh, you. I spoke, uh, uh, what language did you just speak in that other book? And then, uh, oh, in Iktatut, yes, yes. Yes, and I spoke <laughs> Chickenese. So this is a multilingual uh, preview it, it definitely, today. Definitely, very yes. much, very international. And speaking of international, our next publisher is Floris Books, which was the publisher, ah. the Scottish Publisher of the Year. And you're thinking, how many Scottish publishers are there? More than you would think. Yes. There are a lot of Scottish publishers. So congratulations to Floris Books on their honor. They started a wonderful publishing program for middle grade called the Kelpies and the Gravediggers Club. Now, mm. you're thinking, Artie Conan Doyle, that seems vaguely familiar. Hmm, where have mm. I heard that name before? Yes, it is a young Arthur Conan Doyle. And when he was 12, he was a kid on the streets of Edinburgh wondering about, you know, what, what all these mysteries were that were happening around him and wanting to figure out the solution to them. So this is a wonderful historical fiction. A mystery that will sure to enrapture children. And then in a few years when they discover that Artie Conan Doyle actually wrote a wonderful um, set of, of stories about Sherlock Holmes, then they'll already be ready. So that is Artie Conan Doyle and the Grave Diggers Club. And I think that is up on NetGalley right now if you want to request it. So. And another florist books is The Island and the Bear, which the illustrations really give you a feeling. I haven't been to Scotland, but I really feel the Scottish feel when I uh, read this book. And it's about a bear who gets lost and ends up on a island that 
where the people are not used to having bears. And of course, the populace becomes a little nervous that there was a bear loose, and the poor bear, he's dejected, because the place where he came from, everyone loved him. And, uh, but he became hungry, and he starts to, what bears do, starts to steal food. And, uh, but it does have a happy ending, because he befriends the people and they get him back to his uh, home. It's a very touching uh, a story, and it, it has a, what I think is a Scottish feel to it. It has a very Scottish feel, and it's based on something that actually happened on a Hebridean island. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying that right, Hebridean island. So oh, that yeah. was all about bears, yes. and our next book is from Child's Play, and it is all about cats. So. Child's Play is a wonderful publisher. It's been around for many, many years. They publish both on in the UK and then again here in the US. And this is, you're thinking, is this nonfiction? No, it is not. Well, maybe it is. I'll let you decide. So this is all about cats. And we'll get here. We're going to have a little, a little bit of a story time here by Monica Filipino. So this book is all about cats. I warned you. Cats spend the whole day sleeping in a chair. Or do they? Dun, dun, dun. You can add sound effects as you like. <laughs> now, isn't that gorgeous? Gorgeous. Are humans gone? What shall we do now? I've got a plan. A plan. A plan. Oh. Now, look at this art. Is this not That's fantastic? That's beautiful, right. Fantastic art. So, so have I. Now, would you want to mess with the plan of this cat? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. So tennis, swimming, dancing, skating, reading. There's so many things cats can do while their parents, while their parents, while their humans are away. They so, like their parents. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Phew, that was tiring. Time for a snooze. Squeeze in, stretch out, curl around, squash up. Sweet dreams. Now, all cats like to be in spaces, in, in those kinds of spaces. Now, now they have snack time, which is something that every cat likes because I think I know when my cat meows at me that what she's really saying or he is really saying is, you know, where's my bowl and it's empty and why haven't you filled it, you silly human? So I love this. How do you spell sardine? Meow, 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 purr, meow, 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 purr, meow, 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 purr, meow, meow. So that's how you spell sardine. Now you know. Another language. Another <laughs> language, another language. It's awesome. And so this is all about cats from Child's Play, and yes, they can play pirates too. So this would be a great, really fun story time, and there's so many things you could pair it with. Well, I have another book from uh, Child's Play, mm -hmm. and it's uh, another Clive book. This is the eighth Clive book. I love Clive. And I actually could relate to this book. It's called Clive is a Librarian. And Clive, and when I was a kid, I would play school or uh, office, of course, I was the boss uh, in the <laughs> of office. Course. Yes, of and yeah, and but uh, here Clive is uh, playing librarian, and he and his uh, friend uh, Asif are making library cards. And I, I just have a great library card wow. from Brooklyn Public that just came out, That's and it's the Wild Thing uh, card. And nice. uh, but Clive uh, does story time. Uh, oh, he reads to his, he has story time with of his course. cat. Yep. And they uh, also speak duck because there's quack quack in that <laughs> too. But he actually does book displays. He does everything a good librarian does. So that's Clive as a librarian. But I would like people to comment because Clive has been a librarian, a teacher, a nurse, a waiter. Clive and his babies and his art, his bags and his hat. What should the next Clive book be? That is such an interesting point. Yes. And, and we should probably point out that if you comment, then you are entered to win all of the books, all 34 books, if I did my math right, in this collection. So make a comment about Clive or any of the books that, you've, that we've been showing you, right. and you could be a winner. Or so, about Ellen or Rocco. Yeah, you can, you can comment on how excellent his bow tie looks. Yes. Because it is pretty fantastic. Thank you. Anytime. Now, one thing I heard about Clive recently, can I tell this? Sure. Says that they, they have drag queen story time yes. in Brooklyn, and, and Clive and, and is one and, of their uh, favorites. And NYPL. And, and NYPL? In, San, in San Francisco. It's a national it's program. It's a thing. It's, I, yes. didn't, I didn't even know, but evidently Clive is a favorite. So. And I'll be yeah. reporting on it for School Library Journal in the near future. Oh, you heard it here first. You 
You heard it here first. It's so exciting. Yes. Well, our next book from Child's Play is A Bear Hug at Bedtime. So this is a journey through bedtime, and this little child plays with a tiger, a lobster, and a bear. But what he's really playing with are his different family members who he's imagining in those different roles. So he's going to the jungle, and he's going to the ocean. Finally, he's having bath time, and in the end... He comes back home and he gets that bear hug before he goes to sleep because isn't that what we all want before we go back to sleep? We want a bear hug, sure. right? From our grandparents or our mothers or anybody we've cast in that role of bear. So that is a bear hug at bedtime. So I think our next... Pub- it's 360, is it? Our next, our next publisher is 360. Now, 360 Degrees is, a, is an imprint of Tiger Tales. And Tiger Tales started 360 Degrees because they wanted to have interaction, interactive nonfiction middle grade books. So this is the first perpetual book. And you're thinking, what does that mean? So this book is about time zones. So here in the front, you can see all the different time zones. Each one is in a different color. And most of them are vertical. And that's something that people have a hard concept of. They don't think about this, the fact that we may be in the same time zone as someplace in South America, but we are. And then we flip the page and we see what is happening everywhere where it's six o'clock in the morning. So it tells us the locations and gives us glimpses into each one of those time zones. So we see all these beautiful, beautiful things. And the time zone is, the time is always up here in the top corner. I'll give you a chance to pick up. Beautiful, beautiful places. It's going around the world. The places are identified in each page. And there we go going around. It's 12. I'm skipping a few pages. And here it is. It is 2.30 p.m. Yes, there are places that have half hours and 15 minutes. Newfoundland being one, which I always thought was pretty cool, and I want to go there just because of that. But we're at 2.30, and then what do we do? We flip over here, and we continue with 3 p.m., so we continue around the world. Each page is a different time zone. And then we get here, and you'd think we'd be done. But what? We're only at 11 p.m. We still have to get back to 6 in the morning. Right. So what do we do? We flip, and then we go here. Ooh, ah, ah. yes. Amazing. And then we continue on our journey through the world and through all the different time zones. So this is what a perpetual book means. And at the very end, it explains each one of the spreads and where those locations are. So, and if you want to, you can keep going and do it all over again. So that is A Moment in Time, a perpetual book from 360 degrees. Yeah, okay. I have some, uh, what I call, uh, I don't know if this is an official term, a dip-in book, a book sure. that you could just pick up and just use parts of it. So uh, we, I have uh, Festivals and Celebrations and Myths and Legends. And Festival and Celebrations uh, goes uh, chronologically through mm-hmm. the year. And so I uh, actually found a festival I did not know about, and they uh, it's not really called the Racing Rudolph Festival. That's kind of the, the headline to grab you. But it is uh, in winters in Siberia, they actually uh, race uh, reindeer herders, actually have, uh, I'm assuming, reindeer races. And uh, so, who, who knew? knew? Who knew? Who knew? And then there's, uh, I wonder where this happens, shamrocks and leprechauns. I have a feeling that's... That one's easier to figure yes, out. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, no, it's in Chicago. Chicago. Oh. Yes, where they dye the water, it, where okay. they dye the water green. Yes. Okay. So anyway, so this is a, a fun book, and um, and then this very traditional Thanksgiving, and myths and legends, and uh, and they're both by the same person, uh, Sandra Lawrence, and mm-hmm. same illustrator, well, Emma uh, Tri oh, Tri Hart. Different, Tri- different Tri- illustrator. Oh, oh, different. Oh, yep. oh, okay. Oh, Jane Newland and. Uh, Emma, try hard. Try hard. Mm-hmm. Yes. So myths and le- legends. Again, you have a variety of myths and legends that you can share with students. A myth a day, a legend a day, right after lunch to get everyone settled down. There you go. That is wonderful. Yes. So we're going to continue talking about Tiger Tales. And this is one of my very, very favorite books coming up in the next season. I think these illustrations are just gorgeous. This is the only lonely panda. Unless you get too distressed and think that this is going to be a sad book, it is. This is by Johnny Lambert, and I'm going to do a little bit of a story time here for you because these illustrations are just too good not to savor. 
Deep in the dewy forest where flamingos danced and butterflies fluttered, Panda sat alone. I wish I had a friend, he sighed. <sighs> then Panda saw her. Wow, look, maybe she'll be my friend. But Panda didn't know how to make friends. I wonder what the other animals do, he thought. So it's flamingos. Graceful flamingos make friends by dancing together. That's it, Panda exclaimed. I will dance. Now, do you think pandas are very good at dancing? Maybe. Slow dancing, maybe. Yeah, maybe slow <laughs> dancing. Well, you know, he tries to build his own legs and with the bamboo shoots, which are very handy and always round, around. And um, that doesn't really work. How could possibly anything possibly go wrong? Oof. Panda picked himself up and watched playful lemurs make friends by bouncing together. Perfect, Panda announced. I will bounce instead. Let's see a bouncing panda, shall we? Oh, that does not end well. <laughs> so here he is bouncing. And next, who does he see? Why, the blue-footed boobies, of course. And any story time where you can say blue-footed boobies, it's a good story time. <laughs> it's always good. So down on the ground, Panda spied the blue-footed boobies. Aha, he cried. I will stomp and strut like a booby, then we will all be friends. Now where did she go? But Panda hadn't looked very far before. He spotted a handsome peacock. Feathers, Panda exclaimed. If I had a dazzling tail of feathers, then surely she'd be my friend. All I need is one or two. And then he tries to take some feathers from the peacock. He was not excited about that idea. Yikes, I'm sorry. So there he goes, and he tries to use the bamboo to make his own feathers. And you can see how effective that is. Mm -hmm. So who needs fancy feathers anyway? Panda picked up some bamboo and wiggled his bottom, which will be fun in story time too. <laughs> this tail wiggle just has to work, he said. Here we go. Because anytime you can wiggle your bottom in story time, it's a good thing too. <laughs> Rats. Panda sighed. She'll never, ever be my friend. And he trudged off to eat his dinner. Deep in the dewy forest, where lemurs leaped and peacocks pranced, Panda sat eating alone, but not for long. Hello, said the other panda. That looks tasty. It's delicious, nodded Panda, and then he had his best idea yet. Would you like to share? Which is always a good idea. And so they did. Among the lush leaves, two pandas ate and played together and became the best of friends. But as you see, all their other friends are there with them as well. So you can find somebody that plays the way you are, and you can also find the way you play with other friends too, which is the way the only lonely panda ends, and I think it's just a lovely, lovely story. But let's go on to something completely different, shall completely we? Completely different. Yeah. One of my favorites of the uh, preview, Fairy Tale Pets, and that's by uh, Tracy Corduroy and Jorge Martin. And it's about a boy and a dog, a boy and his dog. And unfortunately, they are very poor and they have to decide on a business. So he decides that maybe a pet daycare. Yes. Why not? Yes. And so he puts out his, uh, his, he puts out his ad. Need help with your pet? Then Bob and Rex are here for you. We walk dogs, we cat, we cat sit, we house hamsters. No pet too big or too small. Come to the house on the hill. Well, before they know it, people come a knocking on their door. First one is a girl with beautiful gold, golden hair. And she comes with a little bear. A little bear that gets in trouble. He jumps on the bed, he eats porridge. You know where this bear is from. Uh -huh. Yes, and then next guy comes, it's, it's Jack, and he comes with a goose, crazy goose who lays these very hard eggs. But you ain't seen nothing yet. You get a, uh, a troll who shows up with three billy goats. Oh, that's so a problem. So you guess where they're all from? They're all from fairy tales. A great after activity with kids is to think of other characters that could show up at their door. So a, a, a really fun book to use. And I think we need a break. Is that I correct? I think it's time for our intermission. Our intermission. But. But. Wait, there's more. There is more <laughs> after intermission, but during intermission, yes. you have 
the pleasure to see a new, wait, uh, is this a premiere yeah, of this it's book? It's a total premiere of the trailer for My Beautiful Birds. Ah. With art, with is, which is made of plasticine clay by Suzanne Del Rizzo. Mm. And the trailer was created by Sarah E. Southern. And I think it is just gorgeous. So have a moment to enjoy the story oh, of Syrian refugees. And get yourself a cup of coffee or whatever else you'd like. And, and comment. And, and comment so comment. you can win all the books. And we have at least eight or nine people who have commented already. And download the uh, checklist. Okay. And we'll be back with Chris Lloyd. Thank you. We will. <laughs> okay. See you in a little while. Stay tuned for more when we return to the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on Kidlet TV.
Welcome back to the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on KidLit TV. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that book trailer. And uh, Ellen, you've changed. I have. <laughs> Dramatic stuff. Yes. Yeah, magic. Only five minutes. Yes, the magic of television. Christopher Lloyd of, of What on Earth uh, Books. That's yes, right. Thank all you. the way from across the pond. Indeed. But before we talk about that, what's this with the uh, bow tie? I thought I was the only one that got oh, to no, wear no, a bow tie. On I tell show. you where I come from. Everyone wears bow ties. And well, that's yeah. a very good. And also, you don't, that means means if you wear a normal tie, you, you, sometimes it get dips in your suit. But with this one, it's just perfect. Yes. So. What on Earth books? What on Earth books? What on Earth books? Well, What on Earth books, we originated in the UK. Uh -huh. And what we're all about is, um, well, we believe that young people, many young people, think that the real world is far more amazing than anything you can make up. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, as you know, as adults, we forget the magic of reality, you know? That when a, a kid goes to a museum or, or goes to a zoo or, or just goes on a walk in the park, you know, actually so many things are so new. And so what we try to do at What on Earth Books is to really focus on giving kids a, a giant picture, a big tableau that represents huge stories of nonfiction that they can get lost in and take their own journeys. So uh, I teamed up a few years ago with a wonderful illustrator called Andy Forshaw. Mm -hmm. And we tried to take the biggest possible stories you can imagine so that children can go on their own adventures through time. Uh, and rather than just use a traditional book where you have to start at the beginning and you read through it in a conventional way, we did a lot of research into how people told big stories in the past. Uh, and actually what we've tried to do is to revive a format that sort of fell out of fashion a bit, but was very popular, you know, hundreds and thousands of years ago, which is using a timeline. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, a timeline is a very natural way of telling a big story. You know, whether, you know, cave paintings on walls or in the UK, we have this amazing thing called the Bayer Tapestry that tells a story of a thousand years ago when a French duke came over and conquered England, William the Conqueror, and he told all his stories in a hundred pictures on a great big tapestry, which still exists today. And the Aztecs wrote these amazing codices, which is all sort of like a graphic novel but on a big stretched out piece of paper on a timeline so we thought well could we take a a giant story like let's say the whole history of the universe the whole history of the universe right why not let's see as a proof of concept okay and how could we make a timeline that starts 13.7 billion years ago with the beginning of the universe and goes all the way to the present day wouldn't that be fantastic and then kids could find out all sorts of things that adults don't know, which gives a little shot of joy in the brain. And they can, they yes, can navigate uh, wherever they want to go, whatever their interests are. One you know. up on the parents, uh, right. that always helps. That is always a yes, good thing. Yes. And the teachers yes. sometimes, right? So that is what we do. And, and we've teamed up with some great institutions in the UK, um, like the Natural History Museum and the Science Museum to tell the story of nature, four billion years from a bacteria to a rocco, that's mm -hmm. how long it takes uh, to make one of those. And then uh, 10,000 years of science and inventions and all the plays of Shakespeare and these types of things. And we're just now bringing the range over to the US and we've teamed up with the American Museum of Natural History here in New York. I've heard of that you place. You have, yeah, which then is they have, you know, a lots great of, uh, institution and they have a terrific history themselves. Right, so. yes, and lots of great uh, exhibits, et cetera. Terrific. Yes, and so. so I'm going to see this book in the uh, bookstore of the uh, You will Muse see it. Uh, Museum yeah, of there Natural you are, history. the American oh. Museum of Natural History. So they're our partners and we've been through with them all of the books and we've made some changes and aligned it exactly so it's, it's perfect for the, for the audience over here. Uh, and all their, their scientists have vetted all the content and everything, uh -huh. which is really important. Uh, so we're very excited about that. So the way the books work, this is a kind of mock-up. The actual books are at the printers and they're right. ready in about two weeks so they'll be available. Uh, we'll get the copies back. Uh, and what happens is you open the book and you can see you can just read it like a, a regular book to begin with. So you can just turn it over and this is the big timeline yes. that begins at the beginning of the universe and goes to the present day. But unlike most books, uh, what you can do is you can open it up. So Rocco, what I might do is just oh, yes. ask you to take, to take that end of the book take here. This end of and the I'm going to stand okay. up over here. I don't know whether I'm just going to, you're going to uh, lose me altogether. Well, well, but maybe well, if, well, if you, oh, oops, there we go. Ooh, ooh. That's all right. You this can, it's a mock up of a, a book. A mock up of a book. And a mess up of a book now. There we go. Well, that's okay. Right. So my little bit of sellotape. So this there we go. is a timeline of a thousand moments. That's the idea. And we start at the beginning of time and we go all the way to the present day. And you can see space, earth, sea, sky, land, the Stone Ages, the Far East, the Middle East. This is Europe, the Americas, 
Africa and Australia. And with a thousand pictures, it doesn't matter whether you're interested in nature or the Stone Ages or ancient history or modern times, you can find all the key moments and the key people and the key events. And what's fun is you can connect things together and kids love to do this. They take their own journeys. So if I said to you, Rocco, what's happening in 1520? Yes. Right? You'll see we've got this guy, Henry VIII, who's a very famous English king who had six wives, by the way. Well, I have one. Oh, okay. But, okay. but he had six, not all at the same time. And then at the same time, up here you'll see that in the Ming Dynasty, they're building the Great Wall of China. Right. And, and Luther, Martin Luther there, the original yes. one, is protesting against the, the Pope, so that's the beginning yeah. of Protestantism. And this guy has just left Spain and discovered a new world. He's oh, Christopher Columbus, right and the Incas there. are living in Machu Picchu, and, the, and the Queen Amina is fighting uh, uh, Portuguese armies using her um, uh, over in Africa here in Copernicus, whose nickname's Copernic is where I come from. I don't know if you, you use the same thing here. He's discovered the earth goes round the sun. It's all happening in 1520 and 1620, where the, the Pilgrim Fathers are coming over, they're building the Taj Mahal in India. And it's just a wonderful way, you know, of really making history connect. Because so often, you know, kids, they go to school and they're different subjects and different teachers and different timetables and all that kind of stuff. And it's lovely to be able to give them a, a holistic, more interconnected yes. perspective, you know. Well, so. I see so many different uses of this... Uh possible uses of this book in a school setting. And, in a and, school setting, yes, right. And, and, I, and at home, too. And this one will take you through the story of life on Earth in a thousand species. Uh, of course, with the Natural History is, Museum, this is, this is natural, perfect. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I hear they have a few dinosaurs. They have a lot there. of dinosaurs. Sometimes they, they, yes. they set loose at night time, I believe. Yes, you, know, yes. uh, you can actually I, I sleep that's over good. at you in can. the museum. You yes. can sleep over in the museum. And, uh, uh, I, and this, you know, they have birthday parties, and this would be a perfect... What do you call it? Gift for each of the kids at you the bet. birthday party you at get the museum. Birthday party gift. Yes. And then reading is really important. So what we do is we take key moments from the timelines yes. and we turn them into newspaper stories. Like everything happened just yesterday. The War Book Chronicle. Chronicle. You got yes. it. So these are key moments of scientists who have come up with amazing discoveries that have led to the story of life on Earth as we know yes. it now. You know, you may have heard of Linnaeus, who's the guy who gave all the names, the convention, mm -hmm. and, and Charles Darwin over here, and Mary Anning, who was a terrific a person who found some of the most amazing amazing fossils ever in the world. And she, she was just a sort of uh, a young girl. She found these. This is the uh, foundation of the American Museum and the, right. the idea that uh, plate tectonics, which was uh, discovered by a German man called oh, Alfred Wegener. That's not bad when he formed that, well, ministers. The, well, it? yes, but actually this is a lady who discovered that the Earth's core is made of molten iron. Really? And she discovered this. And it's really terrific. There's some amazing stories, like a giant dragonfly. You know, dragonflies used to be the size of an eagle 300 million years ago. Can you imagine that? And they found the fossils of this down a coal mine all the way through to big issues like, you know, rising carbon dioxide levels, uh -huh. things like this that are going to matter in the future. So there's a page of letters to the editor, a quiz at the back. Oh. Uh, the quiz uh, allows the kids to research the timeline, find out all the answers, and then just in case their parents or their teachers or their grandparents want to have a little go, we've yes, included a little magnifying glass. Occasionally, the print does get a little right. well, small Well, this there. means it's suitable for all ages. You suitable see, right? for all yeah. ages. I that's the key. That. Yes. Yeah. So that's the idea, and, and so we have nature, we have history, we have science and inventions. That's a thousand inventors over 10,000 years. Uh -huh. Every inventor you could possibly think of. Again, it's my little stuck together mock-up, but you can get the idea, I hope. Yes. Uh, all the way from Archimedes leaping out of the bath right up to sort of modern inventors. And finally, the plays of Shakespeare. And we're really I excited this this, by yes. this one because this, you know, really doesn't matter what age you are. Uh, usually when kids are introduced to Shakespeare, they do a little bit of Romeo and Juliet or A Midsummer Night's Dream or something. But our approach, which is to connect things, is to say, actually, the best way to introduce children to Shakespeare is to show them all the plays at once. Right. Because and, then and they can do. spot the themes. So yes. we have 38 plays being performed in the Globe Theatre at the same time. Yes. And then you can see them on a timeline from 1590 when Shakespeare wrote his first play all the way to 1613. And there they're being performed. You can see what's happening in the world. And, and if you just ask children to spot the ghosts, they will take you on a journey because it's so visual. You know, from Richard III, who was a power crazy king, mm -hmm. to Julius Caesar, who was friends were so jealous that they murdered him. And of course, jealousy is something that kids feel. And, and, and there are power crazy people around today. And Hamlet's this guy who wasn't sure what to do, whether to believe the ghost and take revenge. Is it to be or is it? 
Not to be. That's the question. Doubt. That is the question. Right. Isn't that it? is the question. So <laughs> the idea is that the themes and the feelings that we experience in our everyday lives are being played out on the stage, and, and that's I, what makes I, Shakespeare so exciting. And I can so see exciting, this you know? being used in uh, even in high school in a, sure uh, English class that's sure. doing Shakespeare. Sure. Sure. And, and you actually have a teacher's. Well, version. we have. Yeah, they come in three formats. That's called a wall book. Yes. There's a, there's a there's a younger person's version, which is a sticker book. So if you want to do oh. the whole history of the world with a four year old, be my guest. Well. Uh, All I have you know, to say is that's it. You do I it as stickers. This one in rehearsal. You did anyway. No. Well, it's fun, isn't yes. it? You know, so you can you can every little sticker has a caption, and the kids can choose which one they want to do, and you don't do it all at once because mm -hmm. you know it's a big deal. But then they can tear it out and put it on the wall and do the history of the world. Or the one for teachers and for libraries. This is a laminated version, oh, which is laminated. ten feet long. Ten. Yes. Yeah, so you ten. can. The you, other ones were six. Six. This? So you can spread your peanut butter on this, and it's fine. You can you can then just. <laughs> That or your jelly or whatever it is, and you know it creates. You can carry on, Rocco. You you missed oh out. Oh my God! There, look at that. It keeps going, I'm right? So shy here. Four billion years, a thousand species, and it'll go around corners because you know it's scored. But you can put it on a classroom wall or in a library. Great for open uh, and it's open uh, parent night. Right. Yes, for yeah. Parent and night. it's the yes. ultimate put story, right there. or you know, yes. Hopefully, something that will. You know, every time kids look at it, they'll spot something new, something different, and and they'll get that little shot of joy when they find out something you don't know. That's the idea. There, there we go. That is What on Earth Books. Yes, so next time I go to the Museum of Natural History, I am going to make sure I go into the gift store. Right. And I, I'm going to ask, where are the wall books? When, the when books? can I see them? At the, so uh, in the museum from July is when July. they will be available in July. Um, but uh, you can come to whatonearthbooks.com and you can get them you know, straight away. So. But I also understand that you can actually get these books from your book dropper if you use right. uh, uh, Brodart or uh, Follett. They, uh, That's right. Baker teachers, and Taylor. Baker and Taylor. Yeah, they yeah, can. All available. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Terrific. Yes. Well, thank you for well, joining us. Thank and, you for having me, Rocco. And, and have a good trip back. And you back. have a terrific place. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. All right. Take care. And we have Ellen back oh, with us. That's right. Yes. Well, thank you for bringing uh, Chris here to... Oh, Chris uh, the, brought Chris here. Uh, that was the amazing yes. thing, yes. yes. I'm grateful to that. Yes. Well, you, sh you told him how to get here. I did tell him how to get here, because <laughs> yeah, well. I think he was going to go to Brooklyn. Brooklyn? There's well. evidently a, a, the same address in Brooklyn, so that's how oh, that goes. Oh, okay. Well, but he is... We he, won't tell everybody the address. <laughs> no, no, we're not going to tell everyone the address. Thank you for stopping me. To, we're not in Brooklyn, but Brooklyn is awesome. It is a great place. <laughs> so let's talk about... I show, the, I show their... Their, what do you, you call their, their, their library, library card. card? Yes, I did. We are very supportive. So we're going to go from the UK, which is where Wild on Earth Books started, to France with Ozu Publishing. Ozu Publishing. And I those, love it, Ozu. I know, Ozu. And those who came last Mon time, ami. the first time we had our first publisher spotlight showcase, you would have met Ariane Lene Forest. Yes. And she told us about Benjamin, the most unusual duckling, who mm -hmm. goes bark instead of quack. Yes. And then she also told us about Louis Cyr, who is a Quebecois uh, strongman. But this year, we're going to be showing off uh, Leon the raccoon, who is going to explore the Arctic. Leon In his the raccoon. first outing, he went all the way around the world, which is kind of like one of Chris's books. It just keeps on going and going and going. And this one, he focuses on the North Pole and on the Arctic. So he starts off by seeing some, some snow geese and thinking, they're so beautiful. Where are they going? I wonder where they're going. I want to go there. Do you ever have that feeling, Rocco? All the time. All I the look time. up in the sky. You I just it. say, yes. oh, look at them flying. I want to yes. go. I want to go. So Leon and his best friend, or Leon, if you want to do the French white beach, you don't have to, um, land on an iceberg. And they meet this very friendly uh, polar bear. This is fiction, I should point out. Um, they meet this friendly polar bear who then helps them get back to land. So they get back to land and they explore all these things about the Arctic. And of course, you can't have a book about the Arctic without the Northern oh, Lights. Northern Lights, beautiful. Ooh, yes. ah, oh. beautiful. So they experience the Arctic and then they decide it's wonderful, but they want to go home. So they finally end up going back home. But this is Leon, the raccoon explores the Arctic, a great way to introduce children to the Arctic in a fictional way, but they can also learn a little bit of non-fiction while they're at it. Terrific. Yes. So and I, I have another Ozu book. You do? Ozu? Yeah, Ozu. And it's the wolf who wanted to be an artist. This is not the first time wolf appears 
in a book. Actually, Wolf's very, very popular oh, in yeah. France. Right? There's yeah. several uh, books. There's several books. And when I went, I was in France not too long ago, and they had a whole wall of nothing but Wolf. And there was Wolf Plush, and like eight or nine of those, and bath books, and we don't have all that here, but we're getting there. Yes, getting and there. the Wolf wanted to be an artist. And so anyway, we had I'll the little that. blue thing, yes. right? That fell out. But Wolf uh, wants to be an artist. What type of artist should he be? Should he be a sculptor? He wasn't very good at that. Should he be a poet? He wasn't very good at that. And so he uh, asks um, his, um, oh, this is where he's being a sculptor. And this is a yeti? A, a yeti? What is a yeti? I don't know. Oh, uh, I think that's an abominable snowman yes, from the Himalayas. I think it? that's that's what I thought it was. I'm going, that doesn't well, look like one. No, no but anyway, no. very attractive one. But he yes. decides that he's going to become a singer. Yes, oh. and he. Oh, and the interesting thing too is actually when you look at closer at the book, you know, sometimes he's reading a Wolf World, uh, you know, uh, right there, and then at the end we'll see where he ends up. Uh, but the he does become a famous. Famous singer with all his friends being backup uh, singers. The Rocking Wolves. Woohoo! Yeah. But, you know, just like our friend uh, what Maurice in the other book, yeah. you know, show business was not for him. You know the reason show business wasn't for him? Because if he stayed in show business, there wouldn't be another wolf book. That's a really good point, Rocco. Yes, but the story I, must go on. The story must go yes. on. So that's the wolf who wanted to be an artist. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. And that book has such strong graphics, which it is it does. He jumps. Which, he act. The wolf actually jumps off the page. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, and every okay. yes, yes. How often does that happen in a book? Yes. Well, actually, in graphic novels, that happens all the time. So next, we're going to talk about Diamond Book Distributors and some of their client publishers, and we're going to start off with Lion Forge and Taproot. Taproot is definitely a young adult novel, and it's about a necromancer. So you're thinking, what is that? Am I, and am I pronouncing it correctly? I hope so. Necromancer. Mm. Okay. So he is somebody who can see dead people. Think about the sixth sense. So his name is Halal, and he has always been able to see dead people. So he has to figure out how he's going to live his life. And he comes to a sense of peace. He starts working in a garden because gardens are full of life. And for somebody who's always seeing dead people, gardens are are warm and comforting things but all the ghosts realize that they can see that he can see them and they are so happy to have somebody can see them that they hang out there all the time and they cause a little bit of mischief and then there's one special ghost named blue who falls in love with halal and when they realize that they're that there is a, a power that's happening from Halal's ability to destroy the world, they have to come to terms with that, but there is a, a wonderful spirit that decides to give them a big gift, and that gift is to give Blue life again. So he brings Blue back to life, and they're able to be in love and be together, which is lovely. And it's an LGBT-friendly story, and it's just a, it's beautifully illustrated, and it's from Lion Forge. Lion Forge, by the way, has been around just for a few years, and I have to say, their fall season is just amazing. So I encourage everybody to go and take a look at what they have coming out. One of my favorites, which we're not previewing today, but I just can't resist a little tease, is called Little Red Wolf. And it kind of flips the story of Little Red Riding Hood. And the protagonist is a little wolf. And the evil wrong evildoer is a, a little girl who seems like she's so nice. But is she really? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, dun, dun, dun. No, no, she's not. So let's go on to another yeah, one. So I have one from uh, Image Comics. Uh, Image Comics, mm -hmm. and tell us about Image Comics. So Image is the third biggest graphic novel publisher in the country, and what they do when you see an Image book, you know it is something that is the passion project of that creator. Right. So it's creator owned. So you know that when you're seeing afar, that this is something that that creator cared so deeply about. That they so it's uh, Kit Seedon mm -hmm. and uh, Leela Del Duca, mm -hmm. afar. That's, that's right. Yes. You know, so this young girl uh, finds out that she can astral project when she's asleep. And when you astral project when you're asleep, anything can happen. Oh. Yes. Yeah, so she ended up going light years beyond and, and happened to injure a young boy, a young man. Oh, what's a girl to do? Oh no, it's yeah. a mystery, but yes. you'll find out. Yes, you'll just in have to, yes, in a far, you'll just have to go back and it's such lush illustrations. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yes. 
Yes. Just absolutely gorgeous. So wonderful fantasy. Yes. Um, kind of science fiction. Mm -hmm. Some science fiction thrown in there too. So that's a far from Afar. image. Yes. And our next title we're going to talk about is Ocean of Secrets from Tokyo Pop. Now, you may remember Tokyo Pop as the publisher that brought manga to the U.S. many, many years ago. And they're back and they're bringing more manga. This is from a young woman named Sophie Chan. And she grew up in Iraq and she was passionate about manga. Read it constantly and started to develop her own manga and became a real star with her, um, with her, she had a blog and she had a YouTube channel and all those kinds of things. And so she created her own manga and this Ocean of Secrets is the culmination of that. And this is her very first work, but it is wonderful. It's about a, a girl who is dropped into a family, almost literally, and she has amnesia. She doesn't know who she is. And then she decides she's going to, um, well, she's, her, her adoptive sister takes her on a, on a little boat journey, and she is washed overboard, but she's rescued by this mysterious boat with these two people on it. And it's the, the boat is actually sailing through the sky, and she finds out that she's in a different plane. Who knew? There are three other planes, and there are these three countries that are at war, and she gets embroiled in the war, and then she ends up, I don't want to give it away. I almost gave it don't, all away right then. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, but anyway, you want to read Ocean of Secrets, and you'll be so glad you did. Speaking of uh, manga, uh, I have the latest manga classic, and they decided to do The Count of Monte Cristo, not because they just went over to the shelf and say, which one should we do now? They actually took a survey mm -hmm. of what book they should do, and they, mm -hmm. uh, it, I guess the vote came out to be the Count of Monte Cristo, just like all true manga, you start from the back, they have illustrations, tell you who the characters are. And, and, but this it's is not the, not the only one that's coming out this year, right? No, it is not the only one, no. but we're going to talk about that oh. one in a minute. And yes. there you go. And we're going to talk about Taproot next. Oh, Taproot. Okay. Taproot. Because, yes. And that's one you get to talk about, Rocco, because oh, taproot. I'm ah. saving the... Yes. Yes. Thank you. There you yes. go. Oh, the tea... No, the Tea Dragon Society. Society. I was testing him. You yeah. passed. Yes, Good but job. this is not Taproot. Is it is not. We already talked about Taproot. Now we're talking about Tea Dragon Society. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're confusing me There's now. There's so yeah. many graphic novels. Yes. They're all worth your time and attention. Yes, okay. <laughs> the tea, uh, uh, this group, yes, yes. Uh, the Tea Dragon Society has a few characters like uh, Greta and uh, Manette right here. And then, yes, these little adorable dragons that tea leaves uh, grow from these yeah. dragons. Who knew? Yes. And so uh, I believe it's Manette who has uh, amnesia. Amnesia seems to be a theme. Yes, yeah. she has amnesia. Yeah. And she can, uh, uh, the uh, make if they make tea from these uh, dragon uh, tea leaves. Yes, they grow it, on their backs, yes. like scales. Yes, yes, yes. It, it helps. So we have a very diverse um, group of characters here. We have this fellow uh, who's Eric, who is uh, in a wheelchair. And uh, and then here is, uh, and they have to take care of these yes. uh, dragons. Yes. And the dragons are in danger, so they, they have are. to be taken care of. Yes, so this mm -hmm. is... Yes. And I should point out that this is not original size. It's actually going to be much larger than this book. It? And it will be hardcover. And is there a tea recipe in the back? Oh, there It'll should be. be. <laughs> if, if not, we should yeah, we'll put make one, one online. Up. That's yes. right. We will. First, catch a dragon. Yes. Yes. Then, catch a dragon. Yes. 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 So that's how it starts. And steep. Yes. And steep. <laughs> Sounds like a steep order right yes, there. right Ooh, there. Ooh, that was bad. Yeah. That was really bad. So finally, here is another Lion Forge top, uh, title. And this is not lighter than a shadow. This is actually quite the weighty book. But it was published first in the UK. And this is a graphic memoir. Um, think blankets. Think fun home. Um, this is definitely for older teens on up. It begins with the protagonist in, with the, with the memoirist, her name is, is Katie Green. We have a lot of Katie, so I had to make sure I had the right Katie here. Um, Katie Green when she was uh, entering high school, and then it goes through her end of her college days. So Katie is OCD, and she just, are you, oh, no, I won't. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so Katie's trying to exert some control in her life. And the way this manifests itself is through anorexia. So this is about part of her journey with anorexia. And then she goes into therapy to help her combat their anorexia. And she's getting better. And then her therapist molests her. So 
we have that episode, and then she's got to reclaim herself and try to get back to a positive place after that, and it's it's a struggle. As you can see, this is not a quick, a quick fix. This mm -hmm. is a struggle, and you are with her on this journey. The art is very evocative and powerful, and I think that this is something you can certainly lose yourself in, but in the end, she does find herself, she finds a way back to peacefulness and calm and maybe eventually happiness, and that's all we can ask in this world, I think. So just giving you a few views of what's happening here. And so she's find, finding her way back. And then the end we have, I hoped it would end the day. I hope I burned everything, but I would need a little more patience. There were still days I struggled with what I saw in the mirror or with figuring out how to eat. I held on waiting to be recovered, wondering how long it would take. How would I know when I got there? So this is not the end of the book, but it's pretty close to the end of the book. And you know what? She got there. So this is a redemptive story. It's a powerful story. And if you know anybody who's dealing with these issues, or you know what? Books are the way to empathy. Mm -hmm. If you want to know how somebody is feeling who's dealing with these issues, then Lighter Than My Shadow is definitely where you want to go. So let's go Great. on to our next title, which is... Jungle Book. So, from Lighter Than My Shadow to the Jungle Book. Yeah. <laughs> this is from the newest from Manga Classics, along with The Count of Monte Cristo right. that Rocco told you about. And this is their first book for younger readers. So, this is not just the Mowgli stories, because you say Jungle Book and people think of, you know, they think of Disney, right? right. But that was just a little piece of the Jungle Book. There's so much more. So, you'll find Ricky Tikki Tavi and the White Seal and all those wonderful stories included in here, too. And this, again, has that gorgeous art that the manga classics have been known for, and these books have done so phenomenally well. And I think it's because kids are visually literate these days, and this is how they want to read. So as long as they're reading, it's a good thing. And the manga classics, which is, by the way, it's in the Japanese style, it's back to front. This is a very good series to start with. So you never know, they may read this and then want to read the, the actual full text Rudyard Kipling version after that. This is adapted, but they do keep a lot of the same language in it as much as possible. So that is... That's all the, the books from Diamond. That right? is everything from Diamond. But yes. we're going to go on to Barefoot Books now. And Barefoot Books has been around for 25 years. This is their anniversary. Oh, happy, which is, an happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, Barefoot. 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 Right. Yes. yes, we should have done that in stereo. Yes. <laughs> should we try it again? Okay, one, two, two three. three. Happy, happy anniversary, anniversary barefoot, barefoot Books. books. Awesome. Okay. okay. We okay. got there. It's I tried. All right. I it's tried. All, it's, I think you're there. You're, uh, you're yes. good. So, I thought, everybody, you know, I didn't, I don't think our viewers actually know that we have an audience, a studio we do audience, have a small audience here, you know, that, uh, can we, uh, uh, would that be a problem just to, to do a quick pan there? Our small audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yay! Yay! Wait, Thanks for being are. here. Very much, and yes. you know, this is a great opportunity to remind people they should comment so they can win all these books too. Yeah, now if you saw someone in the audience that you know, you could just comment. I saw Sharon <laughs> from New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We have a few people from New Jersey here, we but do, yes, yes, we do. So back to barefoot. Yes. <laughs> So this is actually, what I'm not going to be talking about yoga pretzels, but this is a great example of what I want to talk about, which is Mindful Monkeys. So Mindful Monkeys is a card deck, much like yoga pretzels. And these are activities that you can use. And on yoga pretzels, you could pull it out and you could actually say, okay, we're going to do, we're going to do the community circle. Mm -hmm. And you could do different yoga exercises. And then on the back, it explains how to do that. So with Mindful Monkeys, these are exercises in mindfulness. So don't we all need some more of that in our lives? So think about a busy library day. Think about a day when it's rainy and, the, and maybe parents have dropped off their kids and left. No, that never happens. <laughs> maybe, maybe the kids have just, just gotten a little bit wild because they've been inside. Well, you might want to pull out your mindfulness deck, your Mindful Monkeys, and take a moment just to sit down and breathe deeply and indulge in some of those exercises. So that is Mindful Monkeys coming this fall from Barefoot Books. But next we want to tell you about a book that's already available. Uh, so yes. take and it away. This one is the Barefoot Book of Children. This has been out, but it's uh, Tessa Strickland, Kate uh, De Palma, and David Lean. And, you know, one of the books you're... Um, uh, timeline, not timeline, you know, time zone book yes. you know, that took you around mm -hmm. uh, the world. Well, this takes you around the world uh, also, just to show you the diversity. 
as much as we're different, we are the same, you know, and so you'll see, you know, you'll see children of all shapes and sizes. And one of the things that, uh, one of the spreads that I enjoyed today, because I actually was there, coming here today was Grand Central Station, a uh, terminal, Grand Central yeah, yeah, Terminal, yeah, yeah. here in New York. You know why they call it a terminal and not why? a station? Why? Because it's the end of the line. It's the end of the line. line. That's We're right. We're not there yet. Yes, not yet. <laughs> but the people here in a Grand Central uh, Terminal are all speaking different languages. And, 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 this, and here we just see, again, around the world, we see people at worship. So, uh, again, a great book to show. Can I show it's something simple, else yeah. in this book? Because okay. I love this book so okay. much. So one thing, we had this book at our booth at ALA, uh -huh. and one thing some literature professors said was that they wanted to oh, have this, one, one. this spread up to show their, their students Yes. so that when they're thinking about writing a book or even building a collection, that they think about all these children and does what they're collecting and what they're writing meet the needs of all those children around the world? So you know what? They created a poster, and it'll be at ALA. At your booth? At our booth, yes, yes. at ALA. So be sure to come by and get this, this beautiful poster, because just think about that on your wall. It's a good reminder. It's a really good reminder. Publisher Spotlight at there ALA you go. for that poster. You got it. So let's move on around the world. We were just here, and now we're going to go all the way to New Zealand. Ah. So New Zealand is represented here by Gecko Press. And Gecko was the very first winner of Publisher of the Year at Bologna for Oceana. And you're thinking there may not be a lot of competition. You maybe think it's a Scotland thing. There's <laughs> competition there, and there's competition in New Zealand and Australia, and they were the very first winners. And one of the reasons for that is that they have such wonderful taste. I think Julia Marshall, the publisher, has an unerring eye for excellence. And this is a quiet book because kids, when they go to hospitals, it's a really foreign place. It's a really different place. They don't know what this is. So this poor kid is going to visit grandma. Grandma's in the hospital. He's going with his caregiver, and he doesn't really understand what's happening. He just knows that he's trying to find where is grandma. So here they are, and you can see that it has that kind of impersonal look that hospitals have as he journeys through. Then he finds the... Uh, the little eye for information, because mm -hmm. you know if you find that little eye that that's the place you can find out something. But he only says, where is grandma? And of course they can't help him because they don't know grandma's name. And he doesn't know grandma's name other than grandma. Right. So he continues walking on and he, get, he gets away from his caregiver and he gets a little bit lost. But he isn't thinking about that. He's just trying to find grandma. But he overhears all these adult conversations, these little snippets. And it's kind of mysterious to him. So this is one of those. In the corridor, three grown-ups are chatting. Do you know the five big lies doctors tell? Let's hear it. First lie, you won't feel a thing. Second lie, this won't take long. Third lie, I'll be right back. Fourth <laughs> lie, I've done this hundreds of times. Fifth lie, you're going to be just fine. The grown-ups mm. chuckle. I think that well, tells that, you like a lot. Like I did. Yes. yes, exactly. I mean, the grown-ups chuckle. Hmm, I think. Is that true, I ask? Uh, he was telling a joke, says the woman, but there is a grain of truth in it. None of them knows where grandma is because it all comes back to, where is grandma? But at the time, he's hearing all these things, having all these interesting interactions. And then he finally talks to this doctor who's going to fix his stomach, but he doesn't need his stomach fixed. And then finally, he, a, a nice security guard helps him find grandma, and there's grandma. Yay, you were wondering if that was going to happen, weren't you? Yes. He finds grandma. Thank goodness. Grandma has broken her arm because she slipped on a banana peel. So the moral of the story is watch out for banana peels. Um, and that is the end of where is grandma because at the end they know where she is and they've gone to see her and she'll be home soon and everything is okay. So that is Where is Grandma from Gecko Press. And I have another book from Gecko Press. Excellent. Is Waiting for Goliath. And you may say, oh, waiting, oh, it's now waiting for a good dough, but it's very similar yeah. in a sense because, inspired. yes, it's inspired. Yes, it has a, a bear who is waiting for Goliath. He's sleeping on, the, he, he waits, oh, well, this is the spread I was looking for. Here he is uh, speaking to the bird, waiting for Goliath. I love the illustrations. We decided that it's mixed media. Yeah. Yes, very vivid. 
Yes, and it goes through all the seasons. It goes through winter, you know, well, all the seasons, and this mm -hmm. is winter, and we all know what bears do during winter. He takes a nap. Oh, yeah. Yes, and this uh, is not a spoiler because Ellen said, you have to show them who Goliath is. Yeah, yes. I, I think we can all keep secrets, right? Okay, yeah, yes. totally. And it is a snail, and they get along, and that's why it took so long to get there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all know now, yes. yes, but they get along uh, very well. So it is a, a great book of anticipation. It is great for story time yes. for young kids, too, yes. because they will all just love the fact that he's a snail. Well, and the thing is, they keep guessing. Yeah. Who is Goliath? What is Goliath? How big is he? Well, they yes. don't actually have, they ask, does he smell? Yes. N not that they can tell. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's pretty far away. So that that is waiting for Goliath. Be yes. fun. Yeah. It's very fun. Another fun book. Yeah. And our very last publisher we're going to talk about today is Tune Books. Oh, Tune Books. Tune yes. Books. We love Tune Books. And Tune Books is um, the publisher of graphic novels for young readers. And the one that's coming up this next fall is from Linears. And Linears did one of my very favorite books ever, which is written and drawn by Henrietta. Just wonderful. But this one, well, I'll let you tell it. Okay. Marco, take a, it away. Yeah, the title is uh, Good Pl Night, Night Planet. Planet. Good Night yes. Planet. Yeah. And Planet is what Ellen told me is a comfort creature. <laughs> I just thought it was like a comfort little- Comfort object. A comfort object. Knuffle it, bunny. Uh, yes, that's what it looks yeah. a little like, knuffle bunny. And, yeah. and the first part of the book, when the owner uh, is uh, with her comfort uh, object, oh. yes. And, if you'd uh, rather uh, say something else, yes, Rocco, go right ahead. <laughs> uh, yes, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's pretty much wordless. And then they go to bed and, and she kisses uh, Planet. And then, uh, after she falls asleep, Planet wakes up and becomes alive and leaves the bed and goes downstairs where she meets Elliot. Elliot is a dog. And what to <laughs> what do dogs do with uh, little rag dolls? He picks it up and shakes it all around. And she turns to him and says, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then they meet a mouse. And the mouse, while they're eating cookies, of a course. mouse comes along. Yeah. And the mouse says, hey, you think that's a cookie? I know where there's a, the biggest cookie ever. Come with me. And they go outside and they look up into the sky and they see this big round cookie. And, and they said, how are we going to get to that cookie? And so there's, you know, there are attempts to get to the cookie. And uh, the mouse says, I know someone has gotten up to that cookie because I have seen bites out <laughs> of that cookie. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a lovely book from uh, Toon. So, and that's yeah. our, was that our last book? That is our I cannot last book. believe it. Time flew. It did. Ellen, yes. Well, thank you for yeah. coming. This is the second time you've been here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. And remember, there, remember to comment uh, on this. Mm -hmm. This will be up. Uh, it lives forever, I guess, somewhere on the, yeah, it, yes, on the internet. But they have to comment within a certain time mm -hmm. uh, to be eligible for uh, the 34. 34, 34 books. And you saw all 34 books. Yeah. And if not, just, you know, play back or whatever they, and check them all out. And uh, I, uh, the, I guess the more comments you put, the more chances you have to win these 34 books. So... Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Yes. That's great. Remember, until next time, give a kid a book in any format. Thank you for watching the Publisher Spotlight Showcase on Kidlet TV.